<laughs> so I got a pretty stupid video today, but I think it's gonna be fairly entertaining. Now I've been doing a lot of content on the hilarious GT710 lately, and every time I interact with it, I can't help but think, considering how tiny its heatsink is, and what kind of amazing temperatures we get with said tiny heatsink, this graphics card should be able to run without that heatsink. So today we're gonna answer the very pointless question of can a GT710 perform naked? Now this is obviously a really stupid idea and no one should do this at home, uh, but I really think the GT710 is low power enough to be able to run without a heatsink on. Now the first step is obviously to remove the unsatisfyingly tiny heatsink to reveal one of the most majestic GPU dies I've ever seen. It really is, it really is minute. Now, one thing that I would say is that that is a good sign uh, because, you know, there's so little power under the hood that it should work with no heatsink on. Another thing that's quite promising is if you look at the base of this loser heatsink, you'll see that it only makes contact with the GPU. So we don't have to worry too much about the other components on the PCB overheating. I feel like at this point, this graphics card is regretting ever being born and being sent to my house because I don't know what it did to me, but I just really want to destroy it, you know? <laughs> but anyway, this is the configuration that we're going with. Uh, so we've got this little Delta fan here, which comes from an HP workstation. That fan pushes a lot of air through it. It's very loud and it's very powerful. And then we've got just an NZXT case fan that's going to blow air into that. Now, the actual ambient temperature isn't as super low as it, as it has been for the last couple of days. We're sitting at about 17.5 degrees. Um, that's not ideal. I would like it to be colder in here. Uh, which seems to baffle people. But with that, let's actually try and turn it on and see if it even allows us to start it up. Like, I can't imagine this is gonna go in. Oof! Oh, things have gone wrong immediately. That was 100% the most terrifying thing that's ever happened to me. Um, that fan is so powerful. If it's not held up, it blows itself over. So I'm gonna have to attach it to the graphics card a bit. Now this is definitely a very ghetto solution, but I've just got a little bit of wire that's wrapped around the back PCB. Let's see if, if it works this time. Okay, we're good, we're good for the time. Okay, there we go, it's not falling over. That's the best thing for the fan to be doing. Yeah, well, I mean, we're in Windows. Um, let, let, look at that, you can actually see the GPU die while we're outputting to Windows. Okay, so it's hit 95 and now it's starting to throttle quite aggressively. Um, yeah, as you can see, we're at 666 megahertz and we're still hitting 95 degrees C. You know, it's still running. Like, that's fairly impressive. Now, this may be exceptionally stupid, but it actually kind of works. I mean, the benchmark is running. We're not getting particularly good results at all, but this graphics card is actually working without a heatsink on. I mean, we're sitting at 95 degrees Celsius, which is, which is not an ideal temperature to be gaming at. And we're underclocking quite significantly. So at stock, the graphics card runs at about 940 megahertz uh, on the core. Whereas here we're sitting at 700 and something you know we're jumping around in, in the low 700 megahertz still though i i wasn't expecting it to be able to operate like this at all i'm gonna try and get uh even better temperatures from the gpu so we need more airflow <laughs> it seems like my terrible idea is actually kind of working uh, so what i'm gonna do is refine the process now i want to direct all of the air from that powerful delta fan onto the tiny GPU die. And I think the best way to do that is to, well, sellotape a funnel to the fan. I have no idea if this is gonna work. This feels really stupid. Um, but one thing that, that gives me a little bit of confidence is the fact that the fan 
lines up almost perfectly with the funnel. And that's definitely a sign that this is a great idea. I don't think this is working because honestly it feels like most of the air is just being shot out the back uh, so I actually think it's throttling more heavily than it was before I mean we're hitting 400 megahertz on the core there uh, but it jumps back up to 600 every now and then but it's it's really throttling to save its own life here as you can see it is exceptionally stuttery the biggest problem with the plastic funnel is that it's very restrictive. That hole's really tiny, so it means that the fan can't get all the air through it, and then there's like backsplash and stuff like that. So I need to make a better funnel, basically. Uh, so I think it's time for some arts and crafts. After some pretty second grade level arts and crafts, <laughs> we're ready to test uh, the final stage of running a budget GPU with no, with no heatsink on. Now as you can see, the funnel doesn't taper as, as aggressively as the, as the other funnel did. And you know, we have a bigger, we've got a bigger outlet. So hopefully the air isn't just gonna spill back out and the fan isn't gonna get all confused. Hopefully we're just gonna have a more directed airflow on the graphics card. And then something else that I did was I left all the windows open last night and as you can see uh, the temperature in the room is quite low so hopefully that helps us get you know less throttling while gaming. And here's the actual core frequency that we're running at which is a little bit higher uh, than the previous configuration but honestly that could very much be down to, to the lower ambient temperature. With that, it brings me to the end of one of the more pointless videos I've ever done on the channel. But now we know that if you're using the GT710 for its intended use case, which is pretty much just outputting a video signal to a monitor, then you can run it without a heatsink on. That's what I'm doing right here. There's barely any extra airflow over the Salmonella GT710. It really is a very resilient little beast. You can set it free in the Sahara Desert for months at end with very little water and no additional cooling, and it'll keep on outputting dem video signals. <laughs> with that, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more pointless videos like this one. Follow me on Twitch where I stream on Saturdays. Uh, it's actually gonna be later today on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Reddit, and yeah, until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.